to Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. I'm your host, Kim Todd, and on Digging Deeper, we have in-depth discussions with our extension and industry experts about those important landscape topics. Tonight, we are talking about things that sting with Jody Green, who is, of course, our great <laughs> entomologist on Backyard Farmer, and she has brought with her half of all of the display of everything in the world that either is them or can do something about them, right, Jody? Yeah, we're gonna fit it in in whatever time you have, whatever time you're gonna let me talk, because right now is like the stinging insect time, call after call. I've even uh, had to get rid of some wasps for some people, friends, family. Uh-oh, so yeah. let's start with the difference between bees and wasps. Okay, so, a lot of times in this cartoon or this comic was in an, in the paper uh, this week about why people love bees and they don't like wasps. But we need to be able to tell the difference because we want to know if we have to take those precautions or um, if we should let them be. So whenever we see things flying and foraging on flowers, they're fine because they're just eating. So it's like people at the grocery store. They're just getting their food. Like they're not going to be defensive. Just. It depends on whether All that you be. get the last thing that they <laughs> There's want. There's usually enough in the garden for everybody. <laughs> but for bees, they're usually a lot fuzzier or hairier. But bees are vegetarians. So as larvae and as adults, they'll feed on pollen and nectar and water. Mm -hmm. For wasps, uh, they are going to feed on uh, protein, so other insects as larvae, and then as adults, they'll feed on nectar. So that's, that's a, a big difference. And then... Um, there are social and solitary of both types. So, you know, our main social bees that we know of are gonna be honeybees and bumblebees. So um, those are the ones that we're gonna have to look out for. Usually we, you know, people have their, their honeybees kept. Um, so, you know, you just do whatever the beekeeper tells you to do. Um, for bumblebees, they're pretty, they're wild bees and we don't know where they're nesting, but uh, they can be a sting hazard. So even though we love bees and they're fluffy and vegetarians, um, you know, they can be a sting hazard as well. But um, those are the main differences between the, the bees and the wasps. So when you say social, for our viewers who aren't sure what that means, what does that mean? Okay, so social, uh, like people are social, we need each other, we take care of each other. Um, so for colonies that are social, and so this includes the honeybee, bumblebee, yellow jacket, and uh, the paper wasp. There's a central nest, so uh, you know it might look like that on the outside, it may look like a paper wasp nest, it may look like this underground, but there is uh, one queen or one egg layer and so she is kind of like the mother. And then there's a lot of workers doing the work and defending the colony. So that's like the castle and they will defend it. So that is why it can be pretty dangerous. So the social wasps and bees are gonna be what's going to be the danger sting, stinging insect. However, all of these female insects have a stinger because that's a, a modified egg laying device. So they are capable of stinging. It's just whether they're aggressive or not. All right, so you, you mentioned bees and wasps and in your incredibly beautiful <laughs> box of creatures. What's what here? Okay, so over here we've got bumblebees at the top and then right below them with the shiny abdomens, those are carpenter bees. So they're both bees, you can see they're kind of furry but uh, this bumblebee are gonna be uh, social and the carpenter bee are gonna be solitary. Uh, even though they may have nesting aggregation, so they may live close to each other, each uh, female has its own nest or provisions or takes care of her own offspring. Okay. And then the rest, I believe, are wasps, except for this top one right here. These are carpenter ants. Um, bees, wasps, and ants are in the same order so it's good to know that. So uh, bees are actually just a vegetarian wasp, actually. So, so what else is in your box? So we have um, bees and bees. Yep. And so then, I'll, oh, I don't have anything live that's going to get loose. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, over here, we've got ground nesting wasps. So you may, um, if you've got a great garden uh, full of flowers, you may see these giant uh, wasps. They're called great black wasps. Mm -hmm. um, you may also see uh, great golden digger wasps, which are, they have a little bit of orange on their abdomen. 
Um, the shiny blue ones are gonna be the steel blue cricket hunters. And then we've got the cicada killers here, so they're also ground nesting. And then on this side here, we've got the mud wasps. So you may see little chunks of mud stuck to your um, furniture or structure. Um, these wasps use uh, mud puddles and water and make these little things and then they provision it actually with spiders. So provisioning means they go and get a lot of spiders after building this structure, um, put it all in there and then lay an egg on it. So their larvae pretty much eat the prey. So these ones actually eat the spiders that you don't like <laughs> put in there. Um, and then this one I added, cause they're pretty, these are called cuckoo wasps. They actually invade the wasps or the nests of these wasps and lay eggs close to their larvae. So they're like, you know, wasps parasitizing other wasps. So they're cannibalizing each other kind of. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's a circle of life. And then up here, these, this row here is yellow jackets. So a social wasp, these ones are pretty nasty right now. Um, and then also the paper wasps. And we have several different species of both kinds. Um, the paper wasps uh, are probably familiar because um, they have like the umbrella wasp in uh, nest. Mm -hmm. So it looks like an umbrella on the underside, they're open cells. Um, yellow jackets, they can be underground, they could be in a wall void, or they can have these aerial nests as well. So they can be kind of tricky. So, so this that approximates a nest. <laughs> yeah, so this is some device that, you, that they sell that is supposed to scare away wasps from building on your porch. I do not think it works, and people will also say that you, know, you can use a paper bag, but there are also, uh, wasps will build close, like nests close to each other. So yeah. um, that might be anecdotal. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't go off and buy on one. That. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have the paper wasp, right here. Yeah, so the paper, yeah. yep. So okay. these ones here, the yellow jack and the paper wasp, they build their nests out of paper. So what they use, so if you ever see them, they could be on like rope, on uh, deck, mm -hmm. uh, fences, and they just scrape that wood pulp off and then they make these giant structures mm, uh, like the, sometimes. Like the yeah. one in your box. So the one in this box here, this is a yellow jacket nest. Um, and again, these could be aerial or underground. So there's several tiers and then they're covered in this paper envelope. So those yellow jackets that you see kind of coming in and out of a hole in the ground, you don't really know what it looks like under there. It could be something like this. So, so um, how far down? I mean, if you just see the hole and all of a sudden here here comes a yellow jacket after you. How far down is well, the it, giant? Well, it could thing? be like this, but it also could be in a, a different kind of shape as well. So they will use old rodent burrows. Mm. And so I don't really know, maybe Dennis knows how, how big they are down there, but they can create a lot of nests. And even with paper wasp, they, they can nest in things. So like, um, like playground equipment, just even a pipe. So, you know, they can make their, their nest like long, they can do it in like sign, sign posts. Um, well, my yellow jacket nest with the one that got me was in a compost pile. Yep. And so, yeah. And, yeah. and that's also why it's important to find out if it's bumblebees or yellow jackets because bumblebees will also nest in compost piles. If things aren't used, um, they may nest um, in there and you know, even though people like bees better, I guess, they can still do a number. Right, and they don't really make, they don't make a structure like this, right? The no, bumblebees. they just kind of have these little tiny um, disorganized pots, honey pots. So very um, dissimilar to, to honeybees, which are very organized hives. Right, so. okay, interesting, interesting. So we wanna make sure that you are all paying attention to all of us on Digging Deeper. Send us all your questions, send us your comments. Let us know whether you like what we're trying to dig deep on so that we can decide whether we're going to do this again. And of course, with Jody, we want her to do this every single time we need somebody on Digging Deeper because she brings the most amazing amount of stuff. Well, I'm an educator. I need to teach everyone about everything and I want everyone to be safe. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and in this casserole dish or whatever this dish is, <laughs> we've got a cicada killer wasp. There's a, a male in here and there's also cicada. Uh, these are, these are pretty popular right now. Yeah, they're coming around all gardens. over the place, right? Yeah. And so. isn't it, these are the big ones, right? Yeah, so you can yeah. see uh, the females are a lot larger because mm -hmm. they're the ones who have to lug around the cicadas. The males, they act scary. Uh, they don't really do any of the work. Um, 
but they like to scare people. Tip that up a little bit for our viewers, Here, Jody, so see. they can see what's in there. I don't know. Other way, maybe? There you go. Yeah. It's so there's the cicada, and there's the, there's the uh, killer. I know, right it doesn't now. really look so mean when it's in there. No, but. no, not flying around. Okay, yeah. so, so let's talk about what to do to not get stung, because you've brought a okay. lot of... So, so one of the things that I really try to encourage people to do is scout and walk around their house early in the season. So that's April. Um, oh. You know, when it starts getting warm out is when you need to walk around and find it. Sometimes you'll find like a cluster of like overwintering female wasps, which uh, people freak out because they're like, why is there a nest in my house? But with each of these colonies, um, besides honeybees, so take honeybees out of this, they're an annual colony. So if you do nothing, they will die in the winter. In the winter. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you want to save the bees, then can you not use your compost for the rest of the year? A lot of times people want to use their things. Sure. So it doesn't, it's a no-go. Right. And other times it's, where's this nest? It's way up in a tree or it's way up in the peak of the house. Is it going to hurt anybody? If not, let it be. They will, they'll, they'll, the colony will collapse at the, at the end of the season. However, Later in the season, so she it starts off with one female and she, you know, does all she does and she creates these nests. This is for the social colonies. They get bigger and they get bigger and they get bigger. By late summer, fall, it's a very big colony and they can be very angry when you uh, are close to their home or their nest. So they'll be defensive. So that's why in April, if it's just one, you can like take a fly swatter and you can knock it down. Um, you can take a scraper and scrape the nest off. If it's a paper wasp nest, she may come back and build again. But the thing is, it's gonna be just her. She's mm -hmm. in, there's not really anything to Nobody defend else. at that time. Okay. Right now, paper wasp nest, there's probably like 20 of active workers, but there are like 50 to 100 pupating, ready to come out. So if you get close, can get painful, right? And with yellow jackets, you don't really know. But if you see a hole and you see a lot of individuals, oh yeah, this is a paper wasp nest in one of those chimney or fireplace, outdoor fireplace things. Mm -hmm. And so like you go to light it, you go put your hand, you know, you do anything, they will think you're attacking them and they'll sting you. It's Ooh. very painful, yeah. um, any of these stings. So, um, yeah, you're, so you're looking for individuals that all look similar coming in and out of that hole in that, or that space. It could be even like a, a utility line going in. If you see many individuals going in and out, that's a social colony, and that's time to either call someone professionally to take care of, or you can try to treat yourself, but it's very, I'm going to talk about safety because it's very, uh, if you're allergic, this could be life-threatening. So mm -hmm. if, if you're allergic to bees, stings, or wasps, venom, then you want to have your EpiPen or call somebody. But, so three things. You want to do it at night because that's when all the individuals, the whole colony is in the nest. Sometimes it sounds weird, but you want to make sure you're getting them all. You don't want to be treating a nest and having workers come back. Because mm -hmm. think about how you would feel if someone was like robbing your house at the time, right? Like you're going to chase them. It's not going to go well for them, hopefully. <laughs> so you want to do that at night. You want to wear protective clothing. So um, a bee net or bee hat or something. Uh, I've been known to wear a snowsuit sometimes. So you want to, you know, make sure your face and ne neck is protected. You want to wear uh, gloves uh, all the time. I, d I do because, and then because it's dark, then you want to wear um, a red headlamp. And this one actually is a red headlamp. If you do not have a red headlamp or a red uh, flashlight, you can get, um, red cellophane and put that over top. Do you want me to keep talking with this on? <laughs> red cellophane and put it over a flashlight. So the thing is with these stinging insects, they can't see red. So, really? Yeah, so that's your, that's gonna be how you win this game. Um, and then uh, you can use any of the products that they sell at the store that are labeled for wasps. What they do is they knock them down, um, the colony down really fast, almost like freezing them. They're all gonna be like pyrethroids. Um, so I just brought a bunch because there's not one that I, um, you know, have 
that I, that's a favorite. Some of them can knock down like 20 to 30 feet. I would recommend something that you can be farther away. There's also some that have uh, a foaming ability. So if it's going to be in the ground, foam is going to be heavier. So it might go down more and cover more space. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't recommend foam necessarily for the, you know, something up high because it will just drop Get down, plop down. down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's how you can do things uh, it yourself. But um, And then they also have, if you go to the store, there's always so many different choices. They have a bunch of like different nest, uh, nest uh, traps. So this one's a yellow jacket, hornet trap, a disposable one. And this one uses a pheromone of some sort or feeding um, attractant um, to capture. That's just to capture adults. Um, and then there's also other ones that are reusable. Um, I think you can put like tuna or catfish in there. So, there, or catfish, cat food. Um, the reason why they do that is because later in the season, yellow jackets especially like to come to like our picnics and things and right. start eating our food. So, right. Yeah. I would never have thought of putting tuna or catfish like that. Yeah. to catch yeah, so, wasps. Yeah. And wow. they go through like times where they really like sugar too. So that's why you, you don't want to drink your can of pop or soda out yeah, yeah. Exactly. and then you know trash management things like that so exactly so we're talking about the ones that sting but then people I know we have a, a beautiful little solitary bee hotel in our garden mm -hmm. talk about those for a, a minute or two yeah so because they're all capable of stinging well some of them some are not aggressive so even if they were to sting it's not they're not going to come after you um, but if you're going to touch slap swat, uh, press up against um, any type of stinging insect that, that has a stinger, um, then you can get stung. And so um, a lot of these ground nesters, if you're walking around with bare feet, that is going to be when you could be stung. But with the uh, solitary bees, so I, I love my, my, uh, my leaf cutter bees. Yeah, they, I can pretty much stick my face all over the place around them and, and they are not aggressive at all. But if I'm sure if I squeezed one, they wouldn't be happy. Exactly. All right. right. So it's all about how we kind of treat our friends. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure they stay friendly and, yeah. and we. So, so I'm sure, Jody, that you've, you've encountered the people that are, they're just so petrified of being stung and they don't differentiate between, they want pollinators or they want the flowers or they want flowers that won't attract insects. Is that even a thing? No. Like if you're planting them, they will come because we're right. feeding them. And a lot of times it's, um, you can't say like, we just want bees or we just want butterflies. We don't want right. any, you know, so even with the solitary bee hotels, you get uninvited uh, guests there. Some are gonna, you know, be detrimental to your bees and others won't, mm -hmm. but it's, it's kind of nature, so. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Right. So, so we had a really interesting winter to say the least. And now we're having a really interesting summer, to say the least. So 100 minus 31. Has that impacted the populations as near as you can tell? Or are you seeing, is it the heat? Is it the cold? Is it both? Or is, is it just, we're OK? Well, the one thing that uh, does affect the wasps is it, early in the season, if it, if it warms up and it stays warm, the wasps do really well because you know the female comes out from overwintering and starts her nest and there's if there's not a like a hard freeze or mm -hmm. something that takes her by surprise and knocks down um, the wasp population they all survive and they get bigger and bigger because if you keep knocking it down and she doesn't develop a nest you know until later on then her colonies will be a lot smaller mm -hmm. so with the warmth and the heat and all the degree days that have probably popped in there um, they've just been so much per more productive all so right. colonies will be big wherever they are and so I urge people to, you know, go out, check it out, but, you know, scout during the day, but treat at night. All right. And, and so even though we're well past spring now, will they return to the same spot? So if people see one now and they really, you know, they're going to leave it alone, next spring, can you expect them in the same spot or um, not? Another colony will probably... We'll probably move in because it's all about location. It's oh. like if you know if a house gets sold Real in your estate. house and you think, oh, I didn't like that neighbor. Well, someone else is going to move into the house, yeah. right? So if it's a good place, so if there's a hole there and you know it's an old road burrow, you know, fill that in. Uh, if there's a hole in the wall, seal that gap, things like that, and then be be the first to scout those areas under those, um, you know, under the decks or around the windows. 
uh, next year. All right, excellent. Well, this is always <laughs> intriguing, of course, and always fun and always way too much information for the short amount of time we have. And unfortunately, that is all the time we do have for digging deeper tonight with Backyard Farmer. Thanks to Jody, of course, for coming in and talking to us and bringing all of these cool props. We will be back next time with another in-depth discussion. Do be sure to watch Backyard Farmer live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central on Nebraska Public Media. Thanks for digging deeper with Backyard Farmer.